um, the, the United Nations was created in 1945 after the brutal and devastating Second World War. Uh, and um, in the UN Charter preamble, it says to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Uh, but for the last six months, uh, we've had uh, Israel, uh, which has waged a genocidal war against the people of Gaza, which has claimed the lives of over 30,000 people, majority of them women and children, civilians in other words, has caused the displacement of the entire uh, population uh, of, of that small enclave, uh, and the destruction of 90% of the, the Gaza infrastructure. It has also um, uh, placed a siege uh, on the people of Gaza, uh, which has denied them basic supplies, uh, starving them uh, of food, uh, medical assistance, uh, and um, the population of that neighborhood, as far as the UN is concerned, is now on the verge of famine. And I can see that you have uh, considerable experience in uh, human rights. Um, would you say the United Nations has failed to protect the civilians, particularly with your knowledge of the right to the protection of civilians? And if you are to be selected as, as our diplomat uh, there, uh, with the combined knowledge of your human rights, uh, what actions and what inter interventions would you do uh, to, to alleviate this particular global crisis? The second uh, point is that you're going to be appointed to uh, the center of um, global affairs, the United Nations. And you know you have um, uh, the, our last representative, Dr. Martin Kimani, uh, uh, was a highly accomplished person on the issues of peace and security, um, and a very uh, senior uh, diplomat who has left his mark. Do you think you can fit in those big shoes of um, this giant? And then uh, finally, it is the case that, um, uh, that has been mentioned against you negatively uh, relating to your integrity and the issue of corruption. Albeit that you have not um, been charged, but you know in terms of image, uh, you cannot morally or ethically, uh, you would not have the moral or ethical authority to effectively represent us because that issue would come up. You know, with the, the, the world of internet and Google, if I put your name in there, that's what comes out. Are you not going to be a lamb duck ambassador with a tarnished image who cannot effectively represent your country? Aren't you not worried about that? And is that not going to uh, impact on how effective you can be as our representative if you are to be selected. You may respond. Keep the... the language that was used in the report that was filed to yourselves was a bit inaccurate. Because as you'll see from the written response that I've provided to this committee, the facts of the case are that the ESCC is investigating a matter on the misapplication of funds um, for the Carlon and Mortgage Scheme. Now, um, on 28th of November, 2023, ESCC invited 40 individuals, um, both members and staff of the county assembly, to record statements. I was one of the 40, but I did not receive that invitation. It's only after the announcement of my nomination that then I got um, a call from the ESCC that, oh, you know, uh, we had actually invited you to come and share information. Are you available? I said, yes, I've always been. Uh, it's just that I wasn't aware. So um, the Honorable Yusuf and the Honorable Chairman and colleagues are not adversely mentioned if we are to look at this issue. The only um, point was that I was invited to record a statement. I was not able to do that by the time of coming here. But 
the committee will be pleased to note that I have since clarified um, that there are no role at all in the management of uh, the Calum scheme. I was never, never a member of the loans management committee, which is the one that actually is charged according to the regulations with the management. I was never a signatory to any accounts of the county assembly. In other words, I had nothing to do with it. But members will know that, you know, when you occupy certain positions uh, in the public service, whether or not you are involved, agencies such as the commission will always invite you to shed light on what you know. And that's what I did. In fact, the commission said, you know, you should have come like on 28. I said, the invitation never reached me because I have nothing to do had nothing to do with um, whatever is under investigation. So to that extent, therefore, I don't feel my integrity is in question at all because I have nothing to do with it. Um, that said, you know, I'm still available to cooperate with the, uh, with the commission and indeed any other agencies to help them get to the bottom of whatever inquiry uh, might be before them. Um, to the Honorable Wangari, thank you very much for your very kind remarks um, on this. I know I'm going to New York. You'll rather finish with the Honorable Yusuf. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Um, the Honorable Yusuf, the, the UN and the multilateral system as a whole it, it has been under attack because of the, the behavior of member states. The standing of the UN of the 1945 you know, through to, say, even the 70s or 80s or even 90s is different from the standing of the UN today. Which is why, as a country, and I think um, His Excellency the President has been very vocal about the need to reform the multilateral system, is because countries increasingly are not seeking the mandate to intervene, you know, under, for example, Chapter 7 of the Charter. Um, you know, to be able to intervene um, on peace and security issues. So what we, we're witnessing between Israel and, and Palestine is really a very, very terrible state of affairs because there's, a, you know, egregious violation of human rights and this is something which the UN Security Council has applied its mind to Kenya has already taken a position, and that's the position that we're going to take, which is that there has to be, you know, a stop to um, ongoing violation of human rights. And this is something that we're going to pursue at the UN um, Security Council and all the other organs. Um, but, you know, gratefully, about two weeks ago, the UN passed a resolution allowing humanitarian assistance. And if this committee approves my nomination, this becomes one of the signature agendas that we'll pursue as a country to make sure that we put a stop to the suffering of people, not just in Gaza, but you know, throughout the world. Because you know, the planet is burning, there's suffering everywhere that you turn, including in Khartoum, in Sudan, Tigray conflict, next door, and so on. Um, so, um, I, I will not say that the UN has failed in protecting human rights. I think the Secretary General has been prolific in pronouncing himself on the need for human rights to be protected. He's been doing that consistently, um, passionately, and I think it's up to member states, ourselves included, to make sure that we then support resolutions or other decisions of um, the organization that will lead to better protection of human rights. Um, Ambassador Kimani's shoes are big, yeah, uh, they're really big, but I'm sure this country uh, appreciates the work that he's been able to do as our permanent representative, you know, extremely um, capable diplomat, very gracious, you know, he has already made contact with me and, you know, um, a very good um, product of this country. But that's Ambassador Kimani has done very well. Uh, if I become Ambassador Lokale, uh, we will not seek to reproduce Ambassador Kimani uh, because I also have my own strengths. 
and I'm sure this committee, when you'll be vetting the next PR, will say there are even bigger shoes perhaps of Ambassador Lokale that that PR will have to fill. So I appreciate the work that uh, my brother Ambassador Kimani has done. He's very well respected um, across the board. I intend um, to take forward the work that he has done. But I have no doubt in my mind that there is so much more that we are going to do with the support of the excellent staff that we have at the permanent mission.